many people cannot afford an electric toothbrush or they just can't tolerate the sensations that come along with an electric brush. Please hear me when I say, and I'm a board certified pediatric dentist, that a manual toothbrush is a perfectly acceptable tool for cleaning the teeth when you use proper technique, which we're gonna review here next. There are three key mistakes that people often make with toothbrushing. One, they do not clean the entire tooth. So you think of someone's lips sitting here and here, and they'll smile and they'll brush here in this part, but they will miss underneath the lips along the gum line. So they're not cleaning the entire tooth from tip to gum line. Two, they don't clean the gum line thoroughly. They might reach under their lip to brush, but they're holding the brush still straight up and down. They're not turning the bristles at that 45 degree angle and accessing that gum tissue and cleaning that edge of the gum tissue thoroughly. And three, they brush too quickly. And then they're brushing too quickly, not the full two minutes. They're just kind of doing one quick little sweep and then done. To check yourself and make sure you're not missing any spots, you can use something like those purple chewable disclosing tablets that you or I might remember from our childhood. They still exist, but I'll actually link them down in the description below. And you can even take your finger and lift up your lip or pull your cheek to the side when you're first learning just to be sure you're getting everywhere. To cleanse the gums well, you do not need to brush more forcefully. The proper amount of pressure for brushing is holding your brush like a pen, not like a bat. So this brush right here is called a Wayne brush. It is meant to help you learn the proper amount of force for brushing because when you brush too hard, a little magnet will pop up and it will release from the handle like this. If you're pushing too hard, it won't let you. So this is a good training tool. It's called the Wayne brush. I'll link that also in the description. So not too much force or pressure. And then you want to angle the toothbrush bristles down toward the gum line. It's technically at a 45 degree angle. This is called the modified bass technique for toothbrushing. And you're going to stimulate that gum tissue. And I repeat, the appropriate amount of pressure is that of holding a pencil, pinky up maybe like tea. It is not holding a baseball bat and gripping it like this. And you don't need to scrub back and forth. I'm gonna go through later what you're supposed to use in terms of technique and movements. I'm gonna show you a demo here of the amount of pressure that you need. You'll see what's called the embrasures of a tooth. You need enough pressure to get into these little triangle spaces called the embrasures, but you don't need so much pressure that you're going to cause your gums to be pushed down or to recede or even to wear away your tooth structure over time. With the appropriate amount of pressure, you're going to reach those bristles into those little triangular spaces called embrasures, but you're not going to be splaying out those toothbrush bristles or pushing too hard into your gums or your tooth. So in terms of movement, instead of scrubbing, back and forth or up and down, you actually want to move your brush along the whole surface of the tooth like we talked about in gentle circles for the front and the back surfaces. For the biting surface, you are still gonna kind of scrub along the grooves. You want to use about five sweeps or little circles per tooth. If you find this exhausting, you can get an electric brush and it will do all the work for you. You can see my electric toothbrushing demo linked below, but you wanna take about 10 seconds total per surface, 10 for the fronts, 10 for the backs, and 10 for the bitings. And when you think of it that way, you kind of break it down into smaller pieces. It's not insurmountable. We can do this. And then for the front teeth, the tops and the bottoms, but especially the bottoms because they're so thin and it can be pretty narrow in there or crowded, I turn my toothbrush straight up and down. If you have trouble reaching your back molar corners, you can try a smaller brush head like a kid's brush head or even a triple sided toothbrush. Pro tip, if you do find yourself with food that's still stuck in the molar grooves like crackers, chips, or dry cookies, those are notorious for being tenacious and even hard to brush out, try chewing a piece of sugar-free gum. My favorite brands are High and Xylitol and I'll list those below before you brush. You can do that and that'll get most of that out of there. But hold on, let's take a moment to talk a little bit about bleeding gums, which will very likely occur the first time that you brush like this if you haven't been doing this and you actually stimulate your gum tissue. So skip ahead in the timestamps if you don't wanna learn about gingivitis from this little aside. We're gonna pull a news anchor move and turn to another camera. So your gums may bleed for the first several days that you brush like this stimulating the gum tissue. I want you to know that this is just because your gums are inflamed and that should subside over time with regular brushing, usually after about two weeks. If that doesn't go away, you may have some tartar there that your toothbrush can't clean off and you actually need your dental hygienist to help you with that. I like to remind my patients that your gums can't talk. So the only way of them signaling that they want you to clean a little bit more in an area is through bleeding. So bleeding is a sign, just like if you get a cut on your hand and it gets puffy and red, that's what your gums are doing. They're getting puffy and red and that bleeding is just them talking to you and saying, hey, brush here more often. So don't shy away from brushing an area just because you see bleeding. That actually means you need to brush there more thoroughly, not more vigorously, again, gentle pressure, but just to be sure you're reaching that area each time you brush. Lastly, you wanna brush for the full recommended two minutes. 
I know that sounds like a lot, but let's break it down by quadrants. So you're going to divide your mouth into four parts, a line down the center and a line for top and bottom. So each area is a quadrant. You want to spend about 30 seconds in each area that will total to two minutes. So each tooth has three sides to it, the front, the biting surface, and then the back side. As I mentioned before, you want to spend about 10 seconds on each surface. That's it. Come on, you can do anything for 10 seconds. And if you find it hard to make it to two minutes, get yourself a two minute sand timer or find your favorite song that's over two minutes long and then listen to it each time. Many people use a brush with a great app. My two favorites that have AI 3D tracking are Oral-B and Sonicare. I discuss those in my best electric toothbrush videos that I'll link below for you. But if you're on a budget or you can't stand electric toothbrushes, you can actually try Colgate Hum for kids. It's a manual toothbrush, but it can still work for adults. It's a little smaller, so it might be even more easy to maneuver around your back teeth if you have trouble in that regard. But if electric is okay, you just need a budget-friendly one, you can get the Hum by Colgate or an Oral-B Kids Brush, the 6 Plus version, or a Sonicare Kids Brush. The Colgate Hum, though, at that price range does have the best app and has some 3D tracking type ability to show you where you're brushing. You can actually find my full Colgate Hum review for kids and see a demo of that app below as well. And then don't forget to clean your tongue. I personally love my metal tongue scraper. I'll link it below too, as I find it makes me gag less than the toothbrush bristles. I scrape my tongue once a day and there's no need to rinse with water after you brush. That washes off the concentrated beneficial toothpaste ingredients, namely fluoride or nanohydroxyapatite. You just want to spit out the yucky stuff. And if you can't stand to just leave that little film of toothpaste on your teeth, then you can rinse after but with a fluoride mouthwash. But you don't have to include mouthwash in your routine. Only if your dentist recommends it for a specific reason. Otherwise, most people don't really need it every day. If you do want to use something like a bad breath mouthwash like TheraBreath, Closis, or OxyFresh, use it before you brush, not after. And what about flossing? Typically, I floss before I brush, but there are good arguments for either. So do whatever works for you and that you do consistently. For flossing demos with different tools like straight floss, picks, proxy brushes, you can check out my flossing video demo below too. Now, maybe it's not that you don't know how to brush. Your barrier to daily oral health care isn't a lack of knowledge or a skills gap, but it's actually something else. This next video is gonna go through common roadblocks to good brushing habits and some of my favorite workarounds. 